the shadow of death And I fear no evil Because I'm blind to it all Hey, what's up guys? You're watching Wayfinder. My name is Rocky. Alright, so this is gonna be part 4 to the series of how to attract women as an introvert. Please God, I hope this is the last video, because I only intended it to have a part 1. This is just gonna be one video, but one video turned to two videos, turned to three videos, and now it's gonna be to four. The previous video, if you guys watched that, what happened was my camera died. You may wonder, oh, why did your battery life only, have, only end after 26 minutes of video? Behind the scenes, I actually do so many takes, like maybe five or six takes, and you only see the cuts. That 26 minute video was actually 50 minutes long. Why? Because there are a lot of pauses and everything. I feel awkward looking at the camera, as you can see. You? You can see? And look at me now. The stupid bastard, I'm looking at the, the lens of this camera. Just imagining that it's someone that I want to give value to, like you guys. So, this is what I'm doing. Anyway, let me get on to this. As usual, there will be timestamps down below for those of you guys who want to skip ahead, you don't have enough time. But if you're here for the long haul, then sit back, relax, and enjoy. Let's get into it. Part 4. How to attract women as an introvert. Let me begin by saying this. Um, the previous video, I talked about the five, you know, the bulletproof sequence that I fine-tuned over the years. And step one, I can already see a lot of people asking me, like, step one was how to, step one was to approach the woman. I can already see a lot of people commenting, like, oh, it's easy for you to say. I'm like, yes, I know. <laughs> approach the woman, but this is, the, this is the thing here. You don't chase women. I know that approaching is difficult. And as I said, you don't ask a fish how to catch a fish, you ask a fisherman. And I am a spear fisher. it's a form of fishing. And so the analogy that I can use here, which I applied into life, was that spear fishing, you kind of have to get into the environment where the girls, are. don't chase them, you get into the environment, it's called ambush technique. You sink to the bottom into the water, you hold your breath and then you sink to the bottom of the water. You get into the environment where you know you can hunt. Because you cannot catch a fish on land. Uh, of course, when you have a pole, but you cannot catch a fish in the jungle where there's no water. So you gotta get into the environment where you know that what you're hunting is there, like fish, or in this case, girls, get into the environment where the girls are. So you sink to the bottom, and then afterwards you nonchalantly, please, you don't do... <laughs> you, look ar you look around like you're thirsty with the eyes like as wide as a gazelle. No, you just nonchalantly. It's best if you're doing it in a place where you got business to do, like gym, or a club, things like, you know, things that you can you can have fun or you do what you need to do, mind your own business, so be smooth, be patient, and then once you're at the bottom, or once you're in the location, mind your own business, you survey the surroundings, survey, but nonchalantly, please, you know, you don't, you don't look around like, you know, just nonchalantly, survey the surroundings, and if you guys are like introverts, you call yourself Sigma males, you're observant. And you know how to observe without uh, people knowing that you're observing, right? So I'm not gonna get into that. And then sometimes, as I said, when you do the ambush technique, the fish will kind of disappear. And then fishes are curious creatures, so they will slowly come back after 30-45 seconds. Slowly come back because they're investigating what dropped to, what sank to the bottom of the ocean floor. Same thing with the life. Women will start to... Women will not disperse, of course, when you enter the environment. They'll just be there, they'll hang around, but they'll not really know you're there until you come in and sometimes you have to warm them up to your presence just like in the ocean you warm the fish up to your presence that's why they start to when like the fish coming in is equal to the girls noticing that you're there and maybe start getting comfortable walking around you or in the club dancing around you or in the gym working out next to you and then from there you look at your options and then if there is one that you like like in spearfishing, there's a big fish that comes, you're like, ooh, that's nice. Sometimes spearfishing, when I do spearfishing, fishes that come in are like baby, they're mingmings. So I prefer not to even catch them. It's illegal, actually. It's like, the, you know, like the underage ones or the ones that you don't really want. So the big ones come in and then that's like, ooh, I want that one. Like a woman, you're like, fine, ooh, there's this one here. And you see that maybe she's looking at you or she knows that you're present. Maybe she smiled at you. Maybe you greeted her, hey, good morning or whatever. So if there is one that you like, take the shot. That's why I said when you approach a woman, don't, you know, you have to approach either way. The faster you do it, the better. Why? Because if you take your time, hang around like a beta male, it's like spearfishing. You're in the bottom of the ocean. The fish has come. If you didn't take the shot, what are you going to have for dinner tonight, right? 
you're not gonna have that fish. You're like, well, that's a nice fish. I could have had that fish if I wanted to. I could have had that girl if I wanted to. No, bitch. You miss all the shots that you take. You miss 100% of the shots that you take. And what happens in spearfishing, same thing with life, is that the fishes, they will not stay there the whole time. They'll not like, whoop, whoo, catch me, catch me. No, they will, they're minding their own business as well, just like the girls. And then the fishes will swim away. So the girls will be there, she will warm, she will, maybe she, in the gym she's working out next to you, she already sent you some signals that you read off of it, or she's like warmed up to your presence. But trust me, 100%, she has to go home, she's gonna leave. And sometimes girls, and in certain situations, girls, same as fish, once they leave, sometimes you'll never see the same fish ever again. The ocean is so big, why are they gonna stay with you? The ocean is so big, the world is so big, the girl will leave. She will, you, you want the girl leaves, that's it, my friend. And sometimes in life, you know, if you hang around so much and give a beta male energy, you're always waiting and waiting, the girl never knows that you like her, or the girl, worse, the girl knows that you like her, and you never do the approach, what you have in her mind is an image of a beta male, an image of uh, the guy that she will eventually say, oh, this guy is a, uh, fuck off, the, g the guy is gonna be a friend. So this opens up to the first green flag of this video. I'm actually quite pumped, you know, this is good. First green flag. That's why this is this is why I opened up with the approach first and how to approach properly. First green flag is you gotta get a girl who likes you. Because it's easier to sell yourself and maintain the loyalty if the girl has genuine desire in you. It's the same thing with m marketing and products. You cannot sell milk no matter how tasty, no matter how sweet, no matter how nutritious, you put it in a chocolate flavor, you put it in a strawberry flavor, you put it in a banana flavor, you put it in a pineapple flavor, you put it in a whatever flavor. No matter how good this milk is, you cannot sell it to a person who is lactose free. So it's just the same thing in relationships. The green flag is a girl who already likes you from the beginning, that's why I began with the approach. Because you, you gotta use the spearfishing method of the ambush technique, you survey the surroundings, you get into that environment, you look around, whether it's school, the gym, work, whatever, better not work, my friends. Um, whatever. You look around, girls will send you signals. They may not approach you, but they send you signals. They open up somehow. And uh, life, will, life experience will teach you what signs to look for. I don't want to let this video go on as long, um, longer than it has to be. And then you make the approach. Because the girl already likes you, she opens herself up to you. If the girl is closed off and you try to attack, it's like a fortress, you're never gonna get into it. Even if you get into it, it's harder to sell yourself, she's gonna be so skeptical, she's gonna throw you more shit tests, she's gonna test you more. And then even if you get together with her, maybe she's already eyeing another dude that's more her type. And you always have to constantly be scared, oh, is she gonna cheat on me, is she gonna cheat on me? It's harder to maintain her loyalty, as I said, right? Okay, so now the next problem, right? What happens if nobody likes you? Either you train your mind to be more observant, because I don't believe that nobody likes nobody, right? Even if you're like considered low value, let's say it's better to say to that. Even if you're considered low value, I believe there's still a woman who likes you. Somewhere out there, you just gotta be more observant and stop living in the past. Stop live, have stop, um, you know, having this loser mindset. The world is already out to kill you. It's like the Amazon jungle out there. You want to kill yourself as well. You got to be on your side, right? So have the confidence, look around, because there's always a girl who likes you. And if there's nobody likes you, or if um, you want another girl, you want a better girl than the current options, because like in spearfishing, the Ming Ming ones are flying, you don't want them. Improve yourself, my friend. Improve yourself. But this is the mindset that you have. Improve for you. Stay humble and uh, stay low key. Because nobody likes someone who's boasting all the time. And aside from that, you do not know what that girl wants from you, right? What happens if she's a gold digger? That's why you gotta stay low key. You don't show the flashy watches. You don't show the cash and you're licking your fingers. Looking through the, the cat. No, you don't. Stay low key. Stay humble. Because re really, when you do this abundant, when you are really successful and you're not, and you're secure with yourself, you're not insecure. What's the use of showing off, right? If the girl you what you want to know is that the girl likes you for you. This is why I believe that physical success trumps financial success in terms of attracting women. You can have a good body and women already register that. You don't have to say anything. You can stay low key all you want. You can stay humble all you want. Hell, you can even zip your mouth. The girl looks at you. She already has feelings. She either feels aroused already or she's curious to know more about you. 
the financial success, you kind of have to flaunt it. And people don't necessarily like flaunting. That's why I believe that physical success is better than financial success in attracting women for the right reasons. Because physical success, it shows that you're disciplined, shows that you have integrity. Financial success, you can cheat to be rich. You can, you can steal other people's money to be rich. Physical fitness, you cannot cheat on anything. Okay, no, you can cheat because you can take drugs. But it's kind of obvious, you know, when a person takes drugs and when a person does not. It's kind of like this liver king that was exposed all of a sudden to be on, on trend on different types of drugs. I was looking at him, I was like, no shit. The guy's red, like he's red almost all the time on his videos. And furthermore, with this abundance mentality, you know, you have so many options. You don't take one option super seriously in the beginning. But once she does prov like give you clues that she is a high potential, uh, good potential for the long term, then you start to invest more and do take her seriously. But in the beginning, you just have fun. You just mostly listen to the girl and feed scraps of yourself of information only to her. And you never feed her information unless she asks from you. Unless she asks, do let the results speak for themselves. If you're buff, she will see like, oh, he's buff. Definitely she knows like, oh, why did you do to get buff? No, she's not going to ask that. She knows that you could work out. But all of a sudden you drive up out of the blue. She thought you were poor. Then you eventually you drive up with a nice car. She's going to say, oh, wow, okay. He does something. What does he do? Or sometimes you're super busy. And then she says, why are you always busy? I thought you work only from this time to this time. And then all of a sudden you should have more time in the evening. Why are you, why are you always busy? And you're like, well, to be honest, I didn't mention it before, but I do have a side hustle that I'm doing. Boom. You know, it's easy. It's all of a sudden she's like, wow, Kui, he didn't mention that before, but cool. You know, she likes to find things more out for her. Don't deprive the girl of the chase. Don't blah, 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 spit out of the, all, all the information so you're, or else you're going to be like school. Nobody likes school. You got to be curious first to know the knowledge. Then it, school becomes fun. Nobody likes to be fed information, right? Okay, before I ramble, I'm going to stop. The second green flag is a girl who can think for herself. The best way to do this is to look at her social media, as I said in episode uh, three. Look at her social media. Look at the pictures, look at the captions, look at what she writes in the captions, if it's something original, if it's something unique, if it's something with an opinion. You know that she has a good head on her shoulders. You know that, uh, yeah, she's she stands out from a lot of the women. That's something that she wants. For example, now I don't want to name names anymore because as the videos go on, it becomes more and more recent to my relationships. And I don't want to name names, I don't want to identify anybody, but this girl, when I met her during like the COVID, she didn't wear a mask. The first time I met her, she didn't wear a mask. I was like, oh, you're not scared? She's like, oh no, it's a bunch of bullshit. Well, everyone, all the girls were wearing masks, she didn't wear a mask. And I was like, I like this. She stands out. She has like, kind of like, she has the, like the guts to say no to society. And me, back then, like when I said that I was a Sigma male, be stand out, be unique, be a rebel, I like this spirit. And not only that, this girl, um, before the next date that we had, she texted me saying like, oh, on the next date, can we talk about, can I know your opinions on World War II? Why this happened? Why do you think that happened? How we can improve if something happens? And I was like, damn, this girl really does have a head on her shoulders. And this is something that I really like. This is something that you should look for because a girl who thinks for herself, it gets you thinking, you know, it gets you thinking. Like there's this thing in the red pill, they say like, oh, you know, a high value man would rather pick a pretty girl who works in a pizza shop than a uglier girl who has a Lamborghini and is successful. I'm like, yeah, kind of. But me, honestly, I would rather, I would evaluate them and really date them to know their personality because I do not like that pretty, the pretty girl from the pizza shop. Yeah, she may be pretty, yes. But then what is in her head? Because I do not want to be the guy doing 100% thinking 100% of the time on what to talk about on the date, where to go, uh, what's your opinion on this. If I'm the one only providing the input and she just looks pretty, I don't want that in my relationship. It should be a dance, right? You're not there to carry the girl all around. You're there to talk and then she gives her input and then you become better. How do you become better with a girl who is mentally lower than you? You gotta stick with the winners to become the winner. If you stick with the stupid, Guess who's gonna be the next stupid, right? So get a girl who gets you thinking, who thinks for herself. Green flag number three. She can get shit done herself. Uh, this is very important because many times when I was dating a long time ago, one of the, the annoyed, like my pet peeves is a girl who is always like, the, has the princess attitude. 
uh, you tell her to do this or you tell her I oh, just can you like kind of go there and I'm gonna take a picture of you and then she's kind of slow or unsure of herself somehow I don't like that I like a girl who's confident I like a girl who is comfortable in her own shoes you tell her to do something you're not worried that she's gonna get lost you're not worried that she's gonna fuck up you can do things by yourself this is a girl that you can build an empire with if you don't want that then I'm sorry you gotta build an empire yourself right because the thing is, like, in the woman, you cannot save her all the time. If you're a high-value man, you gotta do your work, you gotta do the workout, you gotta do things that are mutually exclusive to the relationship. And if this girl, you are worried that she can't save herself, you can't, she, she can't get shit done herself, um, you're always worried. And if you're worried, that plays a negative part when you're working, you're not working 100% of the time, you're working 80% because 20% you're worried about what the girl is doing. Is she okay? Is she fine? So get a girl who can get shit done herself. You'll thank me later Green next green flag green flag number four is a girl who's educated now This goes back to the thinking for herself, but a girl who's educated who has like especially a degree in something that is like uh, uh, Engineering or the stem field science is based you know that she's smart, so if you do get with her long term, you're babies, and they usually say that the babies take the intellect from the mom. I don't know if that's really true, but if you get a stupid, uh, if you get a stupid person, <laughs> you, oh, yeah, okay, so your babies come out stupid. Who's the fool now? So you get a girl who's smart, who's educated, and you know how do you know if the girl's smart? She thinks for herself. You can tell by the conversations that you have, and if she's educated in a STEM field, that thing is hard as hell. So you know that she's already smart. By default, there are so many courses, so many modules that you don't like to do in these harder courses, yet she did them and she graduated. So she shows discipline that she's able to go through despite all the stupidity, all the boredom, and it shows forward thinking and delayed gratification. Because what happens in the future when you're with a girl and times are tough and you may have lost your way? Is she gonna like, oh, I'm with the loser bounce super fast? If the girl is forward thinking and delayed gratification, she's prepared to stay with you longer. This is a green flag. Prepared to stay with you longer, pr probably use the education to either continue with the job and get promoted so she has more money with which to sustain the family in the meantime. Or if she doesn't have a job, she can use education to then get a job to sustain the family, sustain the both of you in the meantime while you're building yourself back up. Next green flag. Does she save her money and is she frugal? Now it's very easy to spot this because you can look at the girl, you can see if she has all the branded goods in the world, uh, you can see that uh, what car she drives, the house that she lives in, the things that she has in her house, and you, when you talk to her, when you go on dates with her, you will kind of see it because if she's always in the restaurant ordering the most expensive things and yet she complains like, oh, you know, I'm worried, I don't want to go out all the time because I'm saving, I don't have money at the end of the month, and then when you ask her for when you know her job, you know what she does, and you would roughly know the estimate of the median income. So you say, okay, this is the income, but this is the, like, if this is the income and she complains that she is broke all the time, if the income is like, wow, it's like a good income, it's not minimum wage, and you're wondering, where did the money all go and why is she complaining that she's broke all the time? And you see her lifestyle, she's traveling here, there, wasting nothing, living paycheck to paycheck, that's a bad sign. It does not show good long-term thinking. Because when you, if you, that's why it's bad, if you're financially successful, you get with this girl, guess whose money she's gonna start eating into? Yours! And she's gonna start looking at you to sustain her. She's gonna start to, <laughs> to siphon off all of your resources and then, uh, yeah, you wonder where the money's all going. So it's better to get a girl who's frugal so that your income stays your income and her income, she still has her own income. So both of you can build an empire together, it's much easier. Next one, next green flag is look at how her place is is it clean because i dated many girls that when i went to their place that's why you gotta go to the girl's place sometimes unannounced not unannounced but in a way that it's not um when she brings you to her place in a way that it's not uh like um scheduled or planned because that's the best way to know that she didn't have time to clean up the place to make sure that it looks all good for you and all that you know so look at her place is it clean or is it a mess because I'd rather be with a girl that is OCD and clean, obsessive compulsive disorder. I'd rather be with a girl who's OCD and clean than OMG and a mess, right? 
Because if it's OMG and a mess, because there was this girl who was always like, I went to her place and she it was messy. All the, the, oh fuck. It was like everything was on the kitchen counter. The clothes were on the floor, clothes were on the sofa. I'm like, how do you organize your life around this? And she says, oh, I don't know. I often lose my stuff and na 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 I'm like, fuck, this is not good long-term potential. You gotta get a girl who has the files ready, who has all the documents in one place. You ask for something that uh, you forgot to bring when you go to her place. And she knows exactly where it is in her house. That's a good sign. Especially when she says, oh, it's in a... That's why I'd rather be with a girl with... That's OCD. If I were to pick the extremes, rather be with a girl who's OCD than a girl who's messy and OMG, right? Next green flag is a girl who is not alcoholic or who does not like alcohol at all. Or if she drinks alcohol, she drinks just a bit and then just a bit to have fun in certain circumstances and then that's it she doesn't she doesn't touch the stuff because i dated girls yeah who are alcohol like kind of alcohol i dated this one girl who was like really alcoholic it's fun yeah it's fun to be around her yes because one time we were having shots we had 30 shots in one go man that was a blast i blacked out but that was a blast we were all laughing and laughing telling stories about her life it's fun yes now but then in the future you don't perform well like the next day I woke up after that I felt like I was like a diesel engine I was like <laughs> trying to make my trying to make my way to work it's not a good thing because alcohol when a girl is alcoholic what you gotta understand is that it opens up the question to maybe she has a higher body count she slept with more people because once a girl is alco like when she's under the influence of alcohol it's easier to kind of get her or easier to pull her in she's less um, she's less in her senses and uh, expenditure there we go again frugality if a girl is always going out buying alcohol alcohol is not cheap my friends beer probably is the cheapest thing on the menu in terms of alcohol but if she's always there with the cocktails with the shots with the everything and you wonder why she's always complaining about living paycheck to paycheck that's exactly the reason so don't get with a girl who's alcoholic and this is the one of the tips that i can give you that i always tested especially with uh girls that I had skepticism over if they're really alcoholic, if they're pretending not to be in front of me, is uh, when you go to her place, sometimes you arrange a dinner date at the girl's place, you bring a bottle of wine or you bring something that she likes, like Malibu, something sweet, and then you drink, it's a bottle, bottle. And then when you ask, why'd you bring a bottle? I'm like, well, it was cheaper and it was on sale. So then you pour the, the drinks and you'll notice like maybe the girl is apprehensive. She's drinking just a bit or sipping just a bit. If she doesn't touch the stuff, good. But this is the next step. Then you say like, oh, I'm going to go home, but I don't want to bring this with me. Can I leave it at your place? So you leave the bottle of wine. You leave the bottle of Malibu at your place. And before you close the fridge, you nonchalantly, please, you look at the level of the liquid on the bottle. Look at the level of the liquid on the bottle. Memorize that shit. And then the next time you do come to her place to see her, see if she, if the level kind of went down. If the level went down or if the bottle disappeared altogether, you know that she drank it and you know that she's like, you know, alcoholic or not even alcoholic, but you know she drank it. But if the girl, it's not really a red flag, but if the girl, if you look at the bottle the next time you go and the level of the liquid has not even been touched, especially with the wine, because the wine expires. And if you tell her like, can you drink the wine, drink the wine, otherwise it's going to expire. If she doesn't touch the stuff, that's a green flag. That's exactly what you want there. Next green flag. When you do talk about her family and you maybe visit her parents, you got to know if the parents are still together. This is a very green flag. If the parents are not together, it is not a red flag, but it can open up questions to what, how the girl's personality is and her, and her um, opinions on marriage, her opinions on the long-term value of marriage. And if the parents are still together, then you know that she knows that there is hope. You know that she's more optimistic about marriage, if that's a thing that you want to be. And you have to look at the dad as well. You have to look at the polarity between the parents. Is the dad a masculine figure? Because if the ma dad is a masculine figure and the mom is also quite is a, if, like the, pol the polar opposite, like kind of feminine, that's a good thing. It shows that uh, the girl was raised in a traditional home. Now, this is quite rare nowadays because a lot of families are divorced. A lot of parents are either the parents are divorced or the parents are opposite polar in saying that the woman is the one, the mom is the one that's a masculine figure and the dad is the feminine figure. And I've seen a lot of girls that uh, whose parents were the opposite, whereas the dad was the feminine one. And she, the girl, the daughter is super masculine. And in all her uh, relationships, she was always the dude chasing the guy or telling the guy what to do. If you're a masculine guy, you don't want to deal with that. So from the get-go, 
if you see that the girl's parents are like that, of course, you'll take time to know this. But that's a green flag. That's like a ting that you can confirm and you can move forward. Parents are still together and the dad is a masculine figure. The last green flag, I want to finally finish this video, is, you know, guys, we are physically attracted to women. We are visual. We look at the visual cues. And uh, we like a woman, of course, who will stay young, who will look pretty, who will not get fat, preferably. But you got to give them some slack. If you do get her pregnant and she does have a baby, she's going to get fat. But you still got to treasure her because that is your baby and she's doing it for a reason. She's not getting fat because well, she's getting fat. She's doing it because of a baby. So give her some slack. But long term, if you want to know how a girl is going to turn out and you want to know that she's going to be attractive in the long term, the easiest thing to do is to look at the genetics in that you look at the mom. When you look at the mom and you see that she's in a good shape, in a good figure, then you know that most probably the daughter is going to turn out the same way. And you also look at the family members. You look at the family, the grandparents, not, not the grandparents, because grandparents after a certain age, after, like the women after menopause, they do tend to kind of maybe get a bit shorter, get a bit fatter, especially in the Asian culture. But you look at the aunts, you look at the cousins, and you see how they turned out. That's a good tell of how the girl's also going to turn out. And if the mom looks like, wow, okay, for that, for her age, she's looking good then most probably the girl that you're dating will also turn, will turn out to really look very good. I've failed a lot in so many relationships over investing into a girl that I barely even knew. And it's a beta male mistake that uh, you guys may have may have had or you will have in the future because you're always in your feelings. But as I said, the guy's logical. You got to think long term. When you think long term and you work on your value, you're going to have an abundance mentality, which means that you don't really take dating seriously because you know you always have options. You don't take dating seriously in the beginning, but you vet the woman using the green flags and the red flags, and then you act accordingly. You invest more time or you invest less time and effort with her. And then from here, you know, you know, the world is your oyster, practically. So that's it, my friends. I hope this video series has helped you out. If it did, do leave a like, comment your thoughts down below. Probably well, if you do experience something, you can always say that, oh, I experienced this, or I did this and I, I succeeded, or I failed. It's fine. I can clarify. I can maybe give you more advice. And yeah, if you haven't already, do consider subscribing to the channel. So that's it, my friends. Till next time, take care.